Hi and welcome to Concussion Talk Podcast. This is episode 40. I'm Nick Marcer and I'm on with Sam Lamott. And actually I think this podcast is going to be a bit different than most. Because instead of talking about brain injury and specific brain injury issue, we're, we're going to talk about life challenges and uh, and how... What do I wrote on my as I wrote on my page there, that late there like late life challenges such as brain injury or concussion, how they're not an impediment. They're just an important part of life, but not not necessarily. They're a very important part of life. Especially brain injury, like many know mine was, but they're not an impediment to it. Not injuries to life. So, I'm gonna first. If you haven't listened to Sam, Sam Lamont hosts a podcast called Hello Humans. And uh, I will get, st- and Sam will now talk about the podcast, well, his, I'll talk about that during the podcast, but I'll first ask him, if you've ever listened to the Hell Humans podcast, you'll know his first question to his guests is always, who are you? And I'm going to turn the tables and ask Sam, who are you? Hey, Nick, thanks for having me. Well, my name is Sam, and I feel like a lot of things. I'm a dad. I'm a teen dad. Uh, I'm a college dropout. <laughs> I'm an ex meth head. Um, you know, alcoholic and addict in recovery. And those are all things that are very much like how I identify. I also, I have this podcast called how to human and it's part of this company. Like you mentioned, hello humans, which is about really sharing the truth of what it means to be human. And, I'm not saying that other people aren't truthful, but I just feel like if you go into your friend's house and you see that they have a laundry hamper full of dirty laundry, well, you don't think too much about it because you know inherently that they have dirty laundry. But if we don't know about each other's inner lives and our hardships and our struggles, whether it's depression or, you know, um, for me, it, it comes in the form of depression and suicidal ideation and um, really crippling anxiety at times. And it's hard to talk about, especially when you go onto social media and everybody has the, the perfect life with the perfect job, with the perfect wife or husband. And it's easy to feel like, man, I'm really screwing up this lifetime that I have. And what I found is that there are many of us out there that also feel the same way. And it's it's been a quite a journey to get to hear from other people and get to start having these conversations about um, the real stuff or the stuff that generally kind of gets covered up. Yeah. And no, that's I mean, because I find a lot, like, as I mentioned before we started recording, that uh, a lot of times I know I did before I had my brain injury. I was, uh, I just wanted to get, as you say, as like, as the place as Emma says, wants to get back to their old life and wants to get back to, for me, it was being hanging out with friends and, and playing sports and going, going to university. And how that is, although that was important to me then, it's still important, it's still important to me, kind of, but not as much because it's now, well, now I'm, not, so I'm older, but as I look at it, it's, uh, it's getting back to that would be me going back in time, which is not really what we're doing. We're still moving ahead. We still have to go through life and and attack life as well. Not only attack and all like that verbiage at all, but uh, approach life the best way we can. And going back in time is not necessarily going back to where you were before instead of accepting, recognizing where you were now and moving with that instead of trying to be something that you're not currently because what I was before my brain injury was was 20 was 23 years old and and a fit fit young man but now I'm still I'm still I like to think young 30 38 almost 39 and uh so if you're gonna call the young, young man or not but uh but well most people would I guess but um yeah so that's not where I am now this, I can't go back to or what it what I was and where I wanted to go and stuff. So, although that's not that's been 16 years, but still, that even though even a year later, you're not who you were a year before or a month before or a week before or a day before or an hour before. You're a different person an hour later than you were an hour before. So, uh, and uh, actually, 
when I want to, want to, because you mentioned it very, very clear, well, exactly, but not exactly, but what it says on your, I got an, a, a quote from your, your Patreon page for Hello Humans for Sacred so Pockets is called How to Be, or How to Be Human or Being Human. What's it? Sorry, can you have time? How to <laughs> the be podcast human? is called How to Human. How to yes. Human. I yeah. call it the Hello <laughs> Humans. Hello Humans is be your organization and your yep. website, but How to Human. And uh, on your Patreon page, you wrote a quote that you updated, I think, yesterday. I got your notice that says, if you believe what you see, you believe we look at our cherry-picked profile pictures, we curate that our life is the polished story we present, but our truth, our quirky, messy, actual human experience is, is captivating and magnetic because we see our true self in the story. So and I think that's, that's an excellent quote. So to talk about that would you because I know people like people want to go back to or change who they were or they are now and go back to something different or to something you kind of recognize saying this quote they're cherry picking things and looking at life as not accepting that challenges are not necessarily a bad thing but they're a thing they have to move with so yeah well I think we're all kind of mesmerized with this collective fantasy that we've created about what life should be and how it should be and how it should feel. And the, the fantasy kind of is that, um, life is easy. I mean, that it, in a, in its yeah. most simplified form, it's that it's easy and that you can just, you know, keep your head up and coast through it. And that, has never been my truth. My life has always felt very hard to me. And, um, yeah, that's so many people with pain. You find their life is very hard. So, yeah. Continue. Yeah. And, and so, you know, for me, I still catch myself wanting this life that I think isn't attainable. I mean, you know, for me, I have a severe clinical depression and, for instance, you know, I've been eating well, I've been exercising, I've been doing everything I can to manage my depression well. Well, yesterday it just hit me like a ton of bricks and it was, it caught me off guard and, you know, it's been a while since I've actually been, uh, had a severe depressive episode and I, I barely got out of bed Nick, mm. yesterday. Wow. Um, I basically had to take the whole day off. It was really painful and, and full of shame and, so when you have something that feels so different, like for you, your, your traumatic brain injury, um, you, you know, you can feel really, really alone. Yeah. And I think that's the, the beauty about programs like this or, you know, like, uh, how to human is that it's really about getting this stuff out of the, the shadows and everybody has such a different life experience that for people who are dealing with you know, um, like let's say traumatic brain injury related difficulties, it's not going to be very helpful for somebody, um, to be given advice based off of, you know, uh, you know, like to doe eyed 20 year olds just graduating college, like the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the challenges are different and the way to live a high quality of life is, is different. And so, for me, it's really about making connection to other people who understand what what it's like for me. So when I'm struggling, I have people who who understand. Yeah, no, that's that's excellent because you create a in the second network is a is a kind of cliche word. Right? All these words are getting very pretty much used by everyone. So you say hey, create a network. That's like something that said every single like come government. Uh, commercial business and that's it's a, it could be annoying but uh you could just have a group of friends that are just there for you and you know what they'll understand even if they don't understand necessarily because they the friends who haven't gone to haven't experienced what you've experienced with depression they can they at least they'll you know that they'll support you even though they may not fully understand what your situation is um, like I, for example, I don't know what depression feels like. I mean, I, I'm lucky enough that my, 
don't know. I'm feeling. I'm feeling really. I mean, I've had obviously some tough, tough things, but I mean, I'm feeling very, very. I'm feeling good, and uh, but I'm still very interested to hear about what. I don't know if you can describe it or if it's even describable. If you can, even if it's possible to describe it, we well, can. It's not possible to describe all the things, but uh, what it feels like when you are. And you have me not your darkest episode when your regular time of the feeling depressed and the feeling that no one is no one it's just you're alone, it's just you, and no one's coming to help you yeah well for me it's a it's a disease of forgetting you know it's like I forget what makes life valuable or what I enjoy. I forget that I have friends who care about me. I forget that I've done things that I'm proud of. And all of a sudden I'm empty. And, uh, you know, full of shame and sad. And it's literally, I, you know, there's nothing to, there's no quick fix. There's no way to snap out of it. You know, you have to buckle up and, see where this thing takes you and sometimes it means doing things you don't want to do like you know for me it's like getting on a a a cardio bike which isn't going to fix my depressive episode but it's going it's part of the solution for when you know when I come out of it I don't want to have destroyed my life by not doing anything so it's almost like giving my future self the gift of okay well let's still keep up the exercise routine even though you literally don't see any point in it. Let's still eat relatively decent food, which I did. I was not able to do yesterday. Um, Mm -hmm. No. And that, you know, I've had a pretty strict kind of regimen. I I eat foods that are good. You're in California, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in, I'm in uh, Newfoundland, which is obviously in the Southern Island and it's cold and it was not too cold today, but it's, Cold in California, and see nothing grows here. It's all rock. So it's like you know, the stuff grows here. If you put in, stuff will grow if you really put it on, put some big like amounts of soil there. But I mean, you know, it's not California. If you yeah, if you can actually get stuff, so that's an issue. A lot of people deal with not being able to eat well a lot of times. In Newfoundland, here. yeah, yeah, like not, wow. not. I know you're eating, you're eating of some. But you mean like you're eating like healthy food though. You mean like good food like good fresh food do you mean you say you haven't you weren't able to eat well yesterday or you no mean i mean yeah food? normally normally i mean just in terms of feeling my best what helps me feel my best is eating like fresh whole food um yeah. so that you know that means like um f- you know good good quality meat you know foods that aren't processed yeah uh that are low in sugar uh, sugar really has a strong impact on on the way my mind works. Um, I try not to eat like really sim- simple carbs. Like I don't want to eat bread just for the sake of having bread. You know, um, yeah. if I want if I want a carbohydrate, I could get something more complex like uh, brown rice or quinoa or something that's just doesn't just turn to sugar immediately in right. the body. Um, and yeah, yesterday, I mean, you know, un- unfortunately, it just things kind of went off the rails and I, I used uh, food like a drug and just ate very sugary food. And I woke up this morning and it had subsided a bit. You know, I still don't feel yeah. 100%. But no? well, well, thank yeah. you for doing this show then because this is, a, I mean, if it's it's hurt at all, then don't say that's going to help at all. Then there's no point in doing it. So, uh, yeah, oh, I'm I'm really honored to, to be a small part of, of your show. I think this is really cool what you're doing, Nick. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And actually, I was going to, because we were saying before, we were talking about food. Um, the thing about you, yes, you led into it very well, and then I got confused, but not confused, but sidetracked by this the talk of food, um, But um, which is, happens a lot with me. I love food. Uh, and we have about life challenges and how, how they're not, like they are, I mean, people see them as something you can fix and something you can correct and overcome this episode or overcome this disease or this issue but they're actually that just still happened as part of life so it's more of it's not to say hindrance to life it's a reason it's an aspect of your life it's part of your life you talk about that a bit how 
an issue you have is not necessarily a, a hindrance to it, even though it may be tough, may be upsetting, may be difficult, maybe all things, but it is part of your life and 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 so how you can move forward with your with that as part of your life and not look for a quick fix or any fix or just to improve your life and not necessarily coming across it as a thing that can you can move past and and leave behind and forget about yeah so i you know i think in everyday life this is kind of is it it passes uh easier like but there's a lot of people trying to sell the solution and trying to sell the answer yeah to what and they'll they'll sell an answer to whatever uh they think <laughs> is in your way because that's you know that's what we we gravitate towards yeah. this idea that there is something wrong with us that needs fixing and you nailed it on the head is that you know for you and for me we both happen to have these things that aren't going to get fixed yeah like we're not going to i'm not going to have a life where i'm not uh addict in recovery you know if i have uh alcohol i'm probably going to destroy my life (laughs) you know yeah I've proven that over and over again. It's like a switch goes off and all rationale is out the door. And so, you know, it's like the reason why I try to eat well, the reason why I try to exercise is not to fix this this problem. It's trying to live as best I can with it. And my best is going to be different from your best or someone else's best. And, you know, at the end of the day, we are all going to die. That's yes. like the that's the the big thing that we all have in common. And the job that our job as humans is to find a way to live that makes that death less scary. That brings us more fulfillment. I think a lot of this is one of the big reasons why I started Hello Humans. A lot of people are selling happiness like it's um, the ultimate goal. You know, yeah. like. Like that happiness is like the state of enlightenment. And if you do all these things right, then you will just be happy forever and always. I think that's a lie. Um, I've met enough of the, you know, the the world's foremost authorities on living good lives to yeah. understand that, you know, anybody that's selling, I'm happy, happy, happy yeah. all the time is so full of shit. Um, and that fulfillment is really the goal and so i can be miserable for instance i can be absolutely miserable and still be doing pretty well you know um it's like do you mean mean fulfilled you mean miserable but be still being fulfilled yeah i don't always realize it in the moment that i am fulfilled but i'm living in a way that i will remember that i'm i'm doing well and i'm showing up for my son and i'm showing up for life as best I can. I am trying to take care of myself, trying to do the laundry even when it feels meaningless. And yeah. um, and so, yeah, but I will have these voids of time where none of it makes sense anymore and I have to just try and, and keep going. And, you know, to to view it, to spend my whole life trying to fix myself like I'm broken, I don't think is going to get me to death with any more grace. If anything, I think that's going to mean that I miss a lot along the way because I will always be seeking something that's not here and now. And I think, you know, when I'm feeling well, trying to get into the present moment and to realize what's the texture of the wall, what's the, you know, how is this made and who designed it and really pay attention to the details kind of all around in the moment um is is the best quality of life i can have you know instead of being busy but to say i'm going to spend an hour with my son and just just be here with my son just experience this not checking email not doing anything that's, I think, some of the best ways you can experience life. And if you are approaching life as a problem to be fixed, you're not going to get many of those moments. No, you're not. Um, one of my good friends, Bruce, and I, we went on a trip, and we didn't plan it. We just had a map of California. We had $600, and we had a <laughs> bunch of hike, hiking gear, and we didn't nice. know where we were going. We just started going north. 
And oh, it, nice. it, it forced us to pay attention. It forced us to enjoy as many moments as we could because we didn't know if you we were going to end up in a shithole or not. Yeah. <laughs> like we could end up sleeping on the side of a highway and it might yeah. not be a very glamorous place. Yeah. And I feel the same way about approaching life or personal growth or I'm all, I'm all for personal growth. I just am I'm for doing it responsibly and in a healthy way that nourishes your soul and doesn't constantly beat you or convince you that there's something wrong with you that needs changing. Yeah. Uh, but just that maybe helps you develop a habit that you enjoy or, you know, making time for a hobby that brings you pleasure. And yeah, I, I think I went off on a, a tangent. No, there, it's, but it's good. I usually go off a tangent all the time. It's half my show. Um, yeah, like you're saying, I mean, because knowing, knowing who you are, I think, is, is uh, that's, and like who I am, for example, is, like it or not, if I like it or not, uh, not who I am totally, but like, part of, big part of me is someone who, someone who has had a brain injury and cancer, and, uh, and I got, you know, that's like, that's hard enough, I can't live my life and not, and not, and not recognize it. I had a big brain injury, or, or I got to fix my fact that 16 years, 16 years ago, I ran into a tree in my head, and I can't, can't ignore like that. You know, less than two years ago, I diagnosed with cancer, and I've had 18 rounds of chemo. I can't, can't just you know ignore that and uh, and try to fix and make that by finding one little thing and changing my identity. That's no longer me, and that and. Get and show the world that part of that part of my life, which I've been trying. I've tried to do. I know when I, when I was first injured, I was desperately trying to get back. Like I said before, get back to where I was, and and that's not like you're saying. That's not me. That's a different. Even though it is my body and my name and all that stuff and like my personality, but it's it's a different person because it's even like I said like even like a minute ago or an hour ago, it's a different person than I am. In this minute, this hour, it's different. a different, not say a different person, it's not a different attitude and all that stuff, but like a different, a different time. Every moment is just part of your part of your life, and if I just try to ignore, if anyone tries to ignore that, then they're missing a big part of what makes them them. And uh, I think that's very important for people to recognize that that even though. You may have had a brain injury or depression or battles with alcohol or drugs or or if you've had another another disease or another issue accident that's caused you some problems that 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 did happen that recognize that that even though you, it's not enjoyable and you don't like where you are now it did happen and and did move with that reckon reckon you want to accept accepting as being such a it's kind of such a bad a bad like I don't know what's the word look for. I forget. That. I don't know where to look for. I, I, it's kind of a bad rap. We got a bad rap. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it's kind of such a bad rap that it's like that. Being accept, accept is not a word that people want to use because they're saying, "Okay, that means you're just gonna give up on on life and trying to live and trying to be this or do this." Just not accept and recognize. Then use the word recognize. It's the same. It's the same thing. It's like just just being technical with words there, but um. What I actually want to actually mention also is that when I first listened to your podcast, it was because you were interviewing Lisa Genova, and yeah, uh, I, lo- I love her. Yeah, I read because I, I read two of her books, and I saw you interviewed her, and I was like, "Oh, I gotta check out this podcast." And uh, and uh, she mentions about talking about external external identity, how you lose your with I think it was your time Alzheimer's, and uh, and also then she was talking about the O'Briens and Huntington's disease and. And ALS and losing your identity, but um, people feel like that way when after a brain injury, or maybe I guess you do after after you have when you had depression, you don't know who you are, and you lose your identity. And and uh, external external identity is something that we present to people. So, can you talk about how how your what you've learned from your guests and your your life, for example, uh, about how. External, external, external identity. Your external identity is not necessarily doesn't make you you. It's not your identity necessarily, in the true sense. 
Yeah. Well, on one level of external identity, like, um, I screwed up a lot. And so I think a lot of things that people cling to, like their education or their achievements, um, you know, that isn't part of what I can hang on to. I was, you know, I, I was basically high and drunk from 12 to 22. I mean, it really got bad at around 14, but it yeah. started at, at 12 and, um, I, I dropped out of college. I became a meth head. And so, you know, I really started my adult, I started my, like, I would say even like teenage years at 22. And so, yeah. um, I'm not somebody who has these anchors. Um, I think that lots of people may have that really, you know, I went to this school and that defines who I am, but I do get trapped in it sometime, sometimes. Um, I mean, one of the things, this may be completely unrelated, but um, there, there's like this dangerous idea of, of should that I get trapped into. Yeah. Like, oh, I should be this. Like, you that know, my word mom, is so dangerous, yeah. Yeah, my, my mom's a successful writer, and so it's like, I should be a better writer, or I should be a better drawer, or I should be further along the, the, my podcast should be more successful than it is. And I frequently have to, uh, combat that. And it's not, you know, there's, uh, unfortunately there's no like, well, you know, e easy solution. It's a process like most of life that uh, you, uh, to anyone listening, please be careful of anyone selling solutions <laughs> to life <laughs> because if only it were so lucky to, you know, take a pill or start meditating or whatever to just change everything. And I haven't met really anything that works that way. What, but I have figured out practices that work. I think mindfulness and meditation can really help, you know, when you're thinking really negative thoughts to just observe them, maybe try and take a step back and observe them. That's helpful. It's not going to make the problem go away right away. But yeah. when it, when it comes to my, external self there's a part of me that has this very toxic image of what my external self is that i am this super productive achiever that is destined for for greatness and that's actually not who i am i'm like somebody who is doing the best they can uh, but i'm somebody who also i'm gonna need to take breaks and yeah. can't can't work for 18 hours a day and still have a good quality of life because I'll just fall apart. You know, I will literally yeah. fall apart. And, um, well, that relates very well. To, I know people with brain concussion, like the energy and that is all you would think you're productive. You, or you want to be productive. You, your external identity is someone who's very, very productive. You are, you do get tired and you need to take breaks. You see that you need to take breaks. Or you're going to fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. And that is part, part of it. And so when you are talking about the solution, which I think is the, the internal, um, thing, it's about learning to trust yourself again. Yeah. Really learning to trust yourself again, learning to know that if that quiet voice in your mind is saying you need to rest, it doesn't matter what's in the way of that. You need to rest Yeah. or, or if, you know, you have this person, you know, for me, this this has come up is you have somebody who you really love and care about. But every time you hang out, it makes you feel bad or you feel less than or, you you, you know, it's not good for you. You need to uh, get some distance, even though you care about that person. You need to get some distance. And, you know, for me, I've I've had to kind of I wouldn't say it wasn't as dramatic as like cutting people out of my life. But it was just going, you know what? I this these interactions aren't good for me. Um, and it's the same with I try not to teach myself with shame anymore. That's so my MO is like, you know, I want to wake up out of bed and, and get myself going by going, yeah, there's someone out there working so much harder than you and you just need yeah. to get up and do it, do it, do it. And that's yeah. talking to myself that way is I can get short-term effects from it but in the long term, it really damages me. And so, like, for instance, yesterday, I missed my podcast deadline. It didn't come out on time. I'm going to have to go back and release it a day late. 
And that's kind of the way my whole life is, is like a day late. Um, And I have to learn how to approach these situations with grace, with not not abusing myself for not being the way I think I should be, but to go, okay, Sam, I really, Nick, I really want to get my podcast out on Mondays. I've never been able to do it. I've never even been able to get my podcast out on a regular schedule. It's like, exactly, it, yeah. it kills me. Honestly, it kills me because the industry it's not, is, yeah, it's not really a day late though. It's just a day that it comes out. So late right. is relative. But it, I know, but it, you know, it doesn't even come out on Tuesdays. It's all over the place, Yeah, you know? <laughs> and because I'm kind of all over the place and it kills me. And I know if I, if it came out on Tuesday or if it came out on Monday and people could count on that, it would be better. I know that, but yeah, same my, way. my journey from getting from where I am, which is kind of all over the place to where I want to be, which is having a very, you know, reliable publishing schedule is a journey that I can't abuse myself the way along the way of it. It's something that I'm going to have to figure out with compassion and with kindness. It's like I want to enjoy what I do. I can't destroy myself in the process. That's yeah, that's a very very good point. And I think that's a it's a great spot to just to actually ask you about, about your just your your own publishing in your in your 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 pocket your pocket website and uh and well before I, before I asked you about that stuff but just how did you get started on your how did you start your pocket did you start your podcast first or your blog first or writing first which one did you start first yeah I started writing first um I had a devastating heartbreak that you know I felt suicidal and alone and I had really screwed up that's why I was heartbroken it wasn't like oh the relationship didn't work it was like I had ruined the relationship really and that was a whole nother (laughs) thing to confront that I could destroy something I quote unquote cared about so much and I just couldn't find anything out there I mean it's probably similar how you started concussion talk I couldn't find anything out there that was speaking to me that was telling my story yeah. And that's why, you know, it, the same way it's so important that you show up, uh, this is my advice to you. I know we've been doing this probably about the same amount of time, um, or not, I don't know, but um, is... Well, I started if, in 2010, if that helps you know. But Oh, yeah, no, you've been going longer than me. Well, but, the podcast um, only 2015 now, so... Okay, but it's like, it's not about affecting millions of people it's that if there's one person if there's young one young person who is confused and feels alone that maybe this can find them yeah you know maybe this thing can find them in my case it's about it's a little bit more uh generalized which you know still, has its ups yeah. and yeah. it has its ups and downs this is very specific if somebody has a traumatic brain injury and they're feeling deeply alone this has the power to speak to them in a way that Oprah never could. I hope you so. know, yeah. yeah. And and that's that's why I started it. I started it because I I know that there's other people in this space, and I'm very grateful that there's other creators creating in this kind of you know vulnerable, open. Let's talk about the hardship of life kind of space. But it, I want to at least be one of them. I want you know if you're feeling completely. Um, screwed i'll try not to swear on your program yeah, i don't worry about it. uh if you're feeling completely screwed i want you to know of one place you could go to where somebody also feels screwed all the time all right yeah. he's now that's a excellent point yeah it's not not always happy 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 or or info that's necessarily so pertinent to anything that's going on but it's just life and just that's not always Sometimes your phone feels good, or so and so somebody doesn't feel good, and they want to talk to somebody about it or hear somebody speak about it. Yeah. So, um, so we actually, we actually will give you a chance now to actually. That uh, may not be the best segue in the world, but I'll work on those. But um, talk about your, your what your okay, your podcast and your for example your Patreon page. If you want to give that up, 
tell people about how they can how they can find Sam and Hell Humans and How to Human podcast. Oh, okay, yeah. So the website is hellohumans.co. The podcast is called How to Human. It should be available wherever you found this podcast. If you are listening on the iTunes Store or Spotify or anything like that, and if you end up listening to the program and like it, I am always looking for people to help support it. We are ad free and it's just audience funded and you can go to patreon.com slash how to human. Well, that's great. That's great. And I basically say the same thing except for concussion talk and, and just, and just, uh, so thank you so much, Sam, for, for being a part of this podcast. And uh, I hope this reaches people who, May have felt that it's great to listen to people talk about brain genes, advances in information, but but also want to hear about about what it means, what what it means to have an injury and, and their emotions and what that's okay to not feel great all the time, to feel sad or or upset or or lost. So, uh, and I think you've definitely articulated that for a lot of people, and as your your podcast does too, your how to Human Podcast, and your, of course, your page on page, and your website. But uh, yeah, that quote is on the quote from your page on page. I've cut, put it on my on my promo promo page for this podcast on Concussion Talk, and uh, so I encourage everybody to go to his page on page and read the quote, and if and read his page on page to find out to see more about this his what he's doing and. Uh, I think Sam's been a great guest, so thank you. And uh, I would just like to I'll take this time just to thank everyone for listening and for and to, as Sam said, like the like Sam was saying, his schedule is no when his podcast come out, and I don't know who even don't even know who my next podcast guest will be. So when I find out, I will try to get them. <laughs> like I said, like a Tuesday or Monday or Tuesday, who knows? But uh, so the next podcast. I hope you'll listen, but I don't know when it'll be, but it'll be hopefully next week. And, um, yeah, so thank you all for listening, and, and we're please visit, well, Sam's pages, hellhuman.co, and please visit my page, concussiontalk.com, and I have a Patreon page as well. You do? Patreon, oh, cool. Yep, patreon.com, patreon.com slash concussiontalk. But um, I have right now my cousin Gareth. So thank you very much, Gareth. He's the one. He's the <laughs> he's the one dollar. He's the one dollar who contributed to that. He's talking about the Patreon. I guess was what five, four years ago, four years ago almost. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm on my, I'm on Spotify, Google Play. The podcast is on. It's more more spread out. It's on Amazon, not Amazon. Two point saying Apple. Apple iTunes store, Apple Podcasts, I enjoy SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, and Google Play Music, and Stitcher now. And so uh, there's lots of places to get the podcast, and only one place to get my my uh, my blog website, which I haven't written a blog in a long time, but uh, that's concussiontalk.com. And um, so well, thank you all. I hope you listen again. And... Um, yeah, so, and thanks again to Sam for, for everything. So, I'd like to just, yeah, that's it. So, thank you so much for everyone. And hope you listen again and listen to Sam's podcast as well. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Music at the beginning of this podcast is by Ben Sound. www.bensound.com. <laughs>